And that's beautiful. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jennifer Glatzofer, but you can call me Jen. I am a musical theatre performer and a voice teacher. And today, I am reacting to a very heavily requested song. I cannot believe I knew this was coming up because um, we obviously saw little teasers on their stories over on social media. And then there was obviously the premiere, so I knew what was kind of coming up. But when I tell you this has been the most requested song, I've had emails, Instagram messages, comments on previous videos. Anyway, it is Austin Brown and Rob Lundquist's Nessun Dorma. I love me some Puccini Turando, so I'm very excited. But I will say this, I am also terrified. <laughs> it does say they try sing opera. As we know, uh, well, from my understanding right now, they're not opera singers. <laughs> so there's that first of all. Obviously we know that Austin Brown has trained in musical theatre, so he has that background. I'm not really too sure about Rob, but still very different, <laughs> so. So yeah, the reason why I'm scared is that there are a lot of, and I'm sure I'll be mentioning this throughout the video, but there are a lot of certain qualities that are needed for it to be considered, considered an opera piece, right? So I love the fact they are saying try. <laughs> we love people that try, and I'm gonna go in with open ears and eyes, and we'll just see what happens. <laughs> this is a reaction and analysis video, so if this is your first time watching one of my videos, be expecting many pauses. I'm not gonna say how many, but there will be many. <laughs> if I end up pausing too much for you and I'm just interrupting too much and talking too much, go and watch the original or click off this video. I have left the link in the description below, so do go and check that out though. And please do also go and support my channel. You can hit that subscribe button and the bell button. All your clicks and likes and thumbs up and comments mean a lot and help with the algorithm and all that jazz. Right, let's get to it. I love this song. I used to listen to Pavarotti's really well-known version, like the big color and everything, like just, and at the end where he's like, um, I used to listen to that like very regularly throughout my, uh, I think when I was in secondary school, high school, I call it secondary school. Um, so like around like teenage kind of years, I used to listen to that like every morning. I was like, Vincero, yes, I will. Um, so that was a nice start. Anyway, <laughs> let's go. in shock um a completely different vocal quality to what we're used to with rob he has a very I mean, we talk about kind of you know vocal tract which is the journey from our larynx um and then out of our mouth nose passage wherever uh but he tends to have quite a high natural larynx position which means that he's getting quite an, uh, a brighter sound because that journey is a lot shorter it is very common one of the qualities is to lower the larynx in like classical opera singer uh, singing. We're kind of getting that here. <laughs> and we're rolling our R's. Hello, Italian. Nessun dorma, which is glorious. We are getting lovely rounded shapes. There are, you know, as I mentioned, there are several qualities that are needed for uh, opera style. So I've just mentioned about having the larynx a little bit lower to create a darker feel. Uh, the the vowel shapes tend to be a bit rounder. There is a lot of twang as well based in uh, opera singer, which we know <laughs> naturally Austin and Rob do hold a lot of twang in their voice. And this is, you know, 
Opera singers don't tend to have mics when they sing. It's not uh, a common thing for them to sing with mics uh, as opposed to musical theatre singers who have like, you know, the mic in, in their wigs or on the side or to help them be heard. Opera singers don't traditional traditionally don't have that so they that twang is there to help them with that volume obviously i know this is recorded but anyway just a fun little fact and there is of course a lot of core engagement which is just needed anyway we are hearing lovely vibrato anyway i'm gonna go back a little bit because there were lovely mouth shape movements um uh, shapes mouth shape movements mouth shapes <laughs> uh valve shapes that were happening and just really rounded and just look at his tongue position as well lots of lovely things i am so far <laughs> really impressed <laughs> And they look mighty dapper in these suits. Yeah, just in that initial, it seems like one of them is closing on the nest soon a little bit quicker than the other one. Um, I don't know if that's just, I'm picking up something or I can't tell. Also, the general feel of it seems a little bit faster than what I'm used to with this song. Anyway, I'm rambling. <laughs> I love this song so much. Um, it seems like it, the the Rob's mouth inside, <laughs> the space inside seems like I would have liked it a little bit more open. I think it's kind of getting a little bit um. Not as much as that, <laughs> but a little bit closer. It could have been a little bit more open here, but it's still so wonderful. And that's beautiful. <laughs> like we are dropping that jaw. That note is up <laughs> on an F sharp four, which is the beginning of his first, like he's into his first passage here. You can hear a beautiful blend there. There is so much uh, like connection in there and that twang, that kind of, you can hear that ping in his voice, right? Ah, um, as he's dropping, but holding that kind of brightness at the top. Oh, it's still quite close there. I'm not used to that phrasing, but. Nice pronunciation though. They're both so beautifully voiced here. Um, Austin is quite chest dominant here though, which is again, a little bit unusual for, what am I saying? So obviously we have the registers <laughs> in, in, in any sort of style, but yeah, I feel like he's kind of going a little bit to that belty kind of style that it probably needs to be a little bit more of a 50-50 mix getting, relying a little bit more on that twang, but wow, <laughs> let's just go back and break this down. He's so well connected. I think they're doing really wonderful. Like, these, you know, they're not, opera isn't their main style. And I love that they've given this a go. Like I said, I was a bit nervous <laughs> going into this, but this, they're both putting their spin on it and opening uh, the their audiences, or well, their audience to opera, right? To Nessun <laughs> Dorma. And hopefully, you know, from then, 
Shall I put Pavarotti's link down there? Because, oh my God, I'm just, I'll pop it in there anyway. Because <laughs> I'm probably going to watch that straight after this. But, you know, it's just so wonderful that they're doing this. I, yeah. There. He changes on the second A4. No, he's got a lovely like twang and it's balanced. Then the second time he gets it, he kind of invites a little bit more chest uh, of a chest kind of connection, which as we know, that belt sound is a little bit more contemporary. That's all I'm saying. It's not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just different. Um, we don't like change. No, we do. I love it. <laughs> I'm going to pause one more time. I'm so sorry. Let me go back. He kind of... Oh, ah, that we get a spread. Um, I know obviously it's going to sound different to me because that's where it lies. Um, oh, ah, that we get that spread, which it invites a little bit more of that chest connection. Uh, but he sounds so good. <laughs> off that quite quick um i'm so i'm go i'm going to be really critical of this but i'm so sorry it's because i like i said i've watched <laughs> that one so many times um Splen i am i a fan of this glissando i don't know Splen is it written like that Splen i think it's just written as a crescendo uh, crescendo <laughs> crescendo we love the slide. Uh, I love the dynamic choices here as well. Uh, it's needed in this little section. And yeah, it's just... I'm going to say it again, it's, they're both very well connected and obviously his training is helping him here with that kind of placement and twang. It's wonderful. <laughs> Just go back to a spread a little bit. Like, he honestly sounds completely different to <laughs> I know, obviously, we've broken down Austin's voice here before, um, like, in his solo stuff, but never Rob. I know this, obviously, a uh, duet. But I had only heard Rob, you know, with Home Free. Um, and he's got this soulful gospel kind of sound in there as well. We've heard him and just a general, brighter kind of tenor voice. So this is completely different. And I love, you know, it's it's so important to cross cross train your voice um, and sing in as many styles as possible. It's not going to harm you. It's not going to hurt you. It's going to offer you more knowledge. And why would you turn that away? Don't you want to be the smartest person in the room? <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I'm really loving this kind of connection. Storytelling is playing around with dynamics as well all over the place. Um which is really, like, not too much, <laughs> but really lovely, because he's just, he's drawing us into the story. Even, like, even, obviously, I'm uh, half Italian, so, and this song is Italian. So even if you don't know what is going on, obviously, read up on the story, like, where it happens in, uh, in Tarando. But he's still kind of portraying the character really, really well, like, drawing us in. And we're like, oh, what's going to happen? This is really nice. <laughs> His pronunciation is so great. Oh, 
vincerò vincerò Why? It's so short. <laughs> and I'm, no! Um, okay, we'll all go back. It, uh, you know, as a duo, it's obviously a, it's a solo piece. As a duo, duet, lovely little harmonies at the end. Only su subtly, not too many. I'm going to say this again. <laughs> I think Rob is the one that's leaning a lot more closer to a classical operatic sound with his narrower kind of vowel... Uh, mouth shape, darker vowel sounds, whereas Austin is going a little bit more like spread and got a little bit more of a contemporary kind of feel to this. I get it, it's probably because I am maybe more used to Austin's voice, solo-wise, so the sh there is more shock, I guess, to where how Rob is doing this and that, that dramatic change. Both of them are doing Splendid. <laughs> Joking, that word means shine. <laughs> Splendid. Um, both, of, yeah, the both of them are doing really, really lovely, and I'm just linking back again to the version <laughs> that I know, which I know it's not. They're, they're doing it their own, and literally the title says two country singers try opera." These two singers are country singers. This is completely different to what they normally sing. So it's just lovely that they're branching out here. Let's go back to where they both come in. Look, even the, oh, you can hear, you can hear those not sentence. Even here, you can hear how Rob is kind of in a darker place, whereas Austin's kind of, Soaring above, which is actually quite unique because normally I would say that Rob has the higher kind of um, larynx position, brighter kind of position than Austin normally would when they're singing in Home Free. So here it's like they've swapped kind of like tone position, like sound of their voice, which is why I think I keep saying that Austin sounds a little bit more contemporary. Look at this vin e. Well, we just get on a third. But notice how Rob is a little bit more the, whereas Austin's going for a vin, 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 which again is going to get that a little bit more brighter. Whereas if we just drop that draw a little bit, it will naturally fi get a little bit more darker because we're just elongating that sound. And then lovely. Now. I think because normally there's they don't go straight into that. It goes into the then we repeat, don't we? And then right at the end, they do that classical. Where are we? Vina che, to get that anchor point on the chair. Vincero uh, is the word, right? To win. I will win. Vin, oh, you get a nice connection from the V. Vina che, and it's like they're going Vina che to get that, which is quite common in this word. I've heard a lot of performance performers uh, do it this way because it gives them another kind of. Uh, anchor point. Vinacero. They do a little. Ah. I sounded like Giselle then. Ah, 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 ah. From Enchanted. Who's watched the Disenchanted trailer? I'm getting sidetracked. I'm so excited for it. Um, but yeah. Vinacero. A 
and then the d- resolve. Um, yeah. I am um, heavily impressed. <laughs> well, as I mentioned earlier, I think it's just really, I think it's uh, brave, first of all, to share, you know, uh, to delve, dwell, dive into a genre that they are not, you know, well known for. Uh, obviously, I don't know how much they've done in preparation for this and like, you know, training or whatever, but to kind of put that out there. That's, this is not what we're used to them singing. We're not used to them singing in a style. So first of all, very brave. Second, it's just wonderful that they have done this because they are opening eyes of other people that may have not really be, not really know much about this genre or maybe thought they weren't really fans of it, but now they're really liking it and hopefully they're gonna go and research some more. Um, so I think it's really, and they, you know, they both sound absolutely fantastic. And you know, I, I want, <laughs> I want you to understand that I love this song <laughs> and a particular performance <laughs> in particular. So that's why I keep going back to Pavarotti, the great, you know. But what they've done here is something really magical and I really enjoyed it. Thank you all for watching this video. I hope you did enjoy it. Please go ahead and click that subscribe button, the bell button and the thumbs up button. Do go over and check me out on Patreon as well. The link is in the description below and I will see you very soon for another video. Bye.